Hello class, and this is Mrs. Jones, and I'm going to be um, doing a sheep's eye dissection demonstration for you. Um, before we begin, um, it's important for you to know that um, the parts of the exterior part of the eye, and um, first of all, in the front here, you'll see um, this oval shape, and that's actually the cornea, and just under the cornea, you'll find the... Um, um, iris and the pupil and when I squeeze my eye it uh, the lens actually pops up to the surface um, sort of like a magic eight ball works but um, it's uh, it's full of a liquid just underneath the cornea here called aqueous humor and then of course the eyeball itself is filled with vitreous humor um, all of this stuff that's around the outside of the eyeball, and it's quite slippery, um, this is muscle and fat. There are four muscles that are attached to the sclera of a sheep's eye. Um, a sheep can look in four directions. A sheep can look up, a sheep can look down to the uh, right and to the left. Now, that's unlike a human. A human has six muscles that are attached to the sclera, allowing us to not only look um, in the four cardinal directions, up, down, left, and right, but we can also roll our eyes 360 degrees. Okay, so that's one difference between a sheep's eye and a human's eye. Now, at the back of your eye, you might have a lot of fat and muscle tissue mounded up back here. And that's really the next step that we need to get to. We need to cut away some of this fat and muscle so that we can get to our op optic nerve. Now, I actually already see and feel my optic nerve here. It is quite, um, it feels like a, a, a cord or a really hard piece of string. And it's sticking up right there. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to start to trim away some of that muscle and fat. And you don't want to be afraid of cutting. Um, you're not going to cut into the sclera. The sclera is the white part of your eye that has a lot of blood vessels um, that feed your eye. And um, the blood vessels, um, that's if you ever get bloodshot eyes or maybe get an irritation and your eyes get uh, bloodshot from that. Um, what actually that is, is those are the blood vessels uh, in your sclera that are getting their ruptured blood vessels in your sclera. Okay, so I want to trim away. Now, some of you may have more fat around your eye than others. Mine was a pretty skinny um, eyeball. The fat is there to cushion the eye in your bony skull um, to keep it from getting your eyeball from getting bruised. So that's the purpose of fat around your eye is for cushion space. Okay, so there I've trimmed that away. The next step is we're going to want to cut the front part of the eye and the back part of the eye. The eye. We want to cut it into two hemispheres or two halves. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to find a place somewhere between the cornea and the back where the optic nerve is, and I want to make a puncture. I want to puncture into with one of the blades of my scissors. Now, this is not an easy task because you'll be reminded when you do this, it will remind you of just how tough the sclera is. Okay, now I'm in. All right, so I've got a blade, one of my blades into the, um, the sclera, and so I'm gonna use the tips of the scissors not like you're cutting paper where you would use the back of the scissors. Using the front tips of the scissors and I'm snip, snip, snip all the way around back to where I started. Okay? And now I have two halves of an eye, as you can see there. Two halves. I've got a front half and a back half. Um, in um, the front half, um, you'll see a, a glop of gel. 
that's sitting there. Your gel may have even fallen out when you cut your eye in half. Um, it is, this is the uh, vitreous humor. Now, I didn't have a lot of aqueous humor come out of this eye, but the aqueous humor is, here it is right here on the tray, on the plate, it's very watery, very liquidy, okay? It's a lot different from the vitreous humor. You see the vitreous humor? The vitreous humor, and I'm going to pull the lens. That's the lens that's sitting on top of the uh, vitreous humor. And you can see it's very clumpy. It's very uh, gel-like. Okay? Kind of feels like jello. It's different from the aqueous humor. But both of the humors, the aqueous and the vitreous humor, are to give the eyeball its shape. Um, our eyeballs are not filled with air. Um, air is able to be compressed under a lot of pressure if you were to go underwater um, and had air in your eye instead of a liquid, um, your eyeball would actually crush. And so that's why liquid, uh, the vitreous humor, is uh, better for filling up your eyeball than, than an air would be. I'm going to put the lens down for now. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the next thing I want you to notice is at the back of the eye, where the optic nerve is, um, it's very, very, very pretty. Um, it's um, a kind of a greenish blue, uh, pearly look, and it's kind of covered up by this uh, brown layer that might even have already started to uh, um, peel together or clump up. And I'm just going to use my scissors and I'm going to scrape at that a little bit to get that layer to clump up. And that is the retina. That is the retina right there. The retina has the rods and cones um, to help you to see colors in black and white. Notice that this whole layer is not attached anywhere else except in one spot. And I can't seem to get that to come apart because that spot where it's attached is actually the blind spot the part of the retina where all those nerves and those signals get sent to is the blind spot which then takes and sends all of those signals to your brain to be interpreted. So I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to go ahead and scrape the rest of that off. So there we go. So there's the retina and it's like it has a consistency of like wet toilet paper. But when it's inside your eye, and you've got all that vitreous humor pressing up against it, it's going to be flattened out like a movie screen in the back of your um, eyeball. Okay? Now I have this pretty iridescent, pearlized look uh, layer. That layer is called the tapetum lucidum. And it is for uh, mainly for nocturnal animals. Um, that uh, won't need to be awake at night and um, asleep during the day. It helps to reflect light inside their eyes so that they can see better. Uh, if you happen to take a picture of these animals at night or shine your headlights on these animals at night, um, they may, their eyes may seem to glow an eerie green or an eerie bluish green color. Um, that is because it is re the light from the, your light or flash from your camera is reflecting off the back of the tapetum um, lucidum. I'm just going to take my uh, scissors here and I'm going to scrape gently. And it's also attached at the blind spot. I'm just going to scrape that out right there and use my thumb and my fingers and just pull that right out and there you go. I have a nice, um, I have the tape to lucidum right there on the tip of my finger. So that's pretty cool. Again though, sheep have this and um, humans do not. Wolves, dogs, cats, deer, lots of other animals have a tape to them, um, but humans don't. Okay. 
All right, so now I have a nice cleaned out back of the eye. Uh, it's almost like a little bowl, okay? And very important part where the optic nerve, blind spot, the retina, okay? All right, so next I wanted to go back to the lens. Um, if you pick up your lens and you'll find that it feels almost like a marble. Can you hear that? It's very hard. It's not soft like you would think. Um, it's actually uh, likened to a, a, um, a, an onion because it's many, many layers. Okay? You, you uh, develop new layers every year of your lens. Now, if I were to take this lens and it were in a live animal and I took and put it um, over top of some words on a page, guess what? It would magnify those words. Uh, I could, it would be like having a magnifying glass and I could uh, enlarge those letters on there, okay? Um, if I could see through this, uh, again, this is dead tissue, so it's not uh, living anymore, so that's why it's kind of a, of a dark yellowish light brown. Uh, but if I could see through this and I could look through it with my eye, I would see that um, uh, images on the other side of it are upside down. And if you'll recall, whenever you are looking in your eye, you know, the lens is behind the iris and the uh, cornea. And so when an image comes through your to your eye, um, the lens focuses it because there's muscles attached that'll stretch this lens or release that to make the lens uh, skinnier or thicker to help you focus on things far away and near closer to you. But that image will come in and it will literally flip upside down and shine on your retina at the back of your eye upside down. Your, ret your retina then has the rods and cones and sends those nerves to the um, optic nerve, which then sends it to the brain and your brain actually flips it right side up. Okay, so getting towards the end here, we're going to look at the front part of the eye, um, the anterior portion of the eye. And I'm going to invert that, which means I'm just going to take the eye, the cornea, and I'm going to flip it inside out, okay? So that'll be easier for me to cut out the iris. This is like a donut, and I'm just going to take my scissors, and I'm going to cut from the inside of my donut, just cut straight out. Make us one incision outward. And then take my finger and my thumb, and gently just pull the iris right off. Okay? There. Now, if I kind of clean this up a little bit and look at it, I can tell that my sheep was a brown-eyed sheep. Okay? My sheep had brown eyes because the iris, which is colored with melanin, is brown. Now, brown is a dominant trait that gets passed down from uh, the mom and the dad to, and it's the most dominant uh, color. But your sheep may have had uh, green eyes, might have had blue eyes, might have even had a little bit of a gray eye. Um, majority of you probably have brown eyed sheep though, since that is a dominant trait. The other thing I wanted you to notice is the shape of the pupil. The pupil is the opening in the center. If I put my pupil I mean, my iris back together there, you can see that the iris is a horizontal slit. That's different from humans. Humans' pupil is round or circular, but a um, sheep has a horizontal slit for a pupil. Isn't that neat? It's another difference between sheep's eyes and humans' eyes is the shape of the pupil but it's still just the same. It's a hole in the center of the iris. The iris is a muscle that opens or dilates the eye so that um, more light can come in when it's darker and it will uh, make the iris get smaller, uh, the pupil smaller whenever um, uh, less light is required. Okay, and then lastly, I'm gonna go back here to pick up and put my um, Put my uh, reinvert my eye, and you'll see this is the cornea. 
Um, the cornea is the covering that protects your eye. It completely um, covers over top of, and it actually sticks and bubbles up like a little dome, um, and there's aqueous humor that fills it up, and it protects the, um, the pupil, the opening in your eye, and the other, uh, the other parts inside your eye. So I'm just going to take my scissors, and I'm going to trim away the rest of the sclera, And there's the cornea. Now again, the cornea is um, one of the, um, has uh, the most nerves of uh, most any part of your body. It is um, easy to heal if it gets scratched, but it hurts the worst of anything if it does get scratched. But um, this is cloudy. It's not very transparent looking. Um, because this is dead tissue. If it were live tissue, it would be like a uh, sheet of glass. You could see right through it. Okay, so this concludes the sheep eye dissection. I hope that you learned a lot about um, your eye through the sheep's eye, and um, I hope you enjoyed this lab.